The allegations against Lily Orchard are some of the worst that I have ever heard about on YouTube. And I know I've said that before about certain creators, but this is just absolutely awful. And when I tell you, I was not expecting somebody who makes videos about My Little Pony and Steven Universe to be accused of such horrific things. Some of those things also somehow revolving around My Little Pony, which is not great. But all in all, if everything being said about her is true, then Lily Orchard is just a complete creep. And that's putting it nicely. Before I get into the whole meat and potatoes of the situation, for anybody who's been here for a while, the OGs on this channel, maybe not the actual OGs from the gaming days because that's about 10 people, but the post OGs who have been here from the Team Pinata days, there are a lot of similarities between Team Pinata and Lily Orchard, yet somehow Lily Orchard is worse, allegedly just to prepare you for that. So if you don't know who Lily Orchard is, she started off on YouTube making content about My Little Pony. She was a member of the Brony community and she would review things related to My Little Pony as well as reviewing My Little Pony fan fiction, something which I had never read until recently and I wish I could go back in time but I can't. And that's not to say that all My Little Pony fanfiction is bad because I haven't read it. I'm sure some of it is absolutely fine, but I've only read Lily's My Little Pony fanfiction, which I'll tell you about later, but it's the worst thing I've ever read in my life, and I've read A Court of Thorn and Roses. Later on though, around 2015 or 2016, she changed up her content to review a multitude of things, which included her making two very, very highly viewed videos, yet very, very controversial videos. And these are The Legend of Korra is Garbage and Here's Why, and Steven Universe is Garbage and Here's Why. The Steven Universe one in particular was extremely controversial, mostly because people really like Steven Universe and people were saying that Lily Orchard's assessment of it was just dumb and she didn't get it. I, however, am not here to talk about her opinions on Steven Universe because I haven't watched Steven Universe and I've heard good things about it. I'm sure it's fine. It's just not the show for me. Now, people started to notice that Lily's content got a lot more harsh and that she would just begin throwing accusations at people just willy-nilly. For example, Lily called the creator of Steven Universe a Nazi sympathizer because she gave the main antagonist of the show a redemption arc. Now, I just personally feel that we shouldn't go throwing around words like that when they're not applicable because they lose their meaning and those words mean things. Maybe just say, you're an asshole if you don't like something. Also, the creator of the show, Steven Universe, is Jewish, <laughs> so maybe fact check things first. She also went on to make videos and parts of videos with more political statements, things like calling ContraPoints a turf. As you can see, Lily is somebody who has just been embroiled in controversy. I mean, if you look at her wiki fandom, the first thing that you'll see is Lily Orchard has garnered infamy on the internet for her apparent misunderstanding of story writing, as evident by her now deleted Twitter thread, Simple Writing Tips, a thread. In addition to this, she also is known for creating the infamous two hour long rant, Steven Universe is garbage and here's why. Which by the way, I had to refilm myself saying that three times because for some reason I kept saying garbage, which is just stupid. But everything I've said so far is not really enough to claim that Lily is one of the worst people that I've ever heard of on YouTube. I mean, we hear about some pretty bad people. We have Illuminati, we have Creepshow Art, we have Team Piñata, who I mentioned. But there is so much more to Lily than some bad takes and bad writing tips. Before I move on with the rest of the video though, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, HelloFresh. 
Whether your goal is to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you with that. They are an absolutely amazing meal kit service that delivers chef-crafted recipes and refresh ingredients right to your door. It makes it really quick and convenient to prepare good and tasty food since they handle all of the planning and all of the shopping. So all you have to do is open the box, take out your pre-proportioned ingredients and cook it. And they also have so many different options depending on what what your goals are or what your requirements are. So if you want something calorie smart, protein smart, vegetarian, whatever it is, and they have over 45 different dinner options that you can choose from. And when you try HelloFresh, you'll get free breakfast for life. So you can start your day right with one free breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. I truly absolutely adore HelloFresh. Me and my partner have been using it for months. The meals are always just so good and so tasty. And honestly, it takes away the annoyance of having that conversation of what are we gonna eat today? Well, what do you wanna eat today? I don't know what I wanna, it, the decision's done. The food's there, <laughs> you just have to cook it. And since all the ingredients are pre-proportioned, it's also helped us to reduce our food waste, which is something which we'd been trying to do forever. It's just so quick and easy to prepare. It's none of the stress and all the delicious yummy food, which is my favorite part of the cooking is the eating it. <laughs> there are just so many benefits to this. I absolutely love it. And like I said, I've been using HelloFresh for months and I'm gonna be continuing to use it for the foreseeable future because it just makes my life easier and it tastes really good. So if you like to try out HelloFresh, then use my link and use the code SCOVFREE and you'll get one free breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on with the rest of it. Back when Lily was more into the My Little Pony scene, there were two creators that she would collab with quite a lot. These were Josh Scorcher and Ink Rose. I have to make a quick legal disclaimer here before I say anything else that everything that I am discussing in this video and everything that is said and shared in this video is based on opinion and speculation, not on fact. This video is an opinion piece and it's not meant to defame or harass any individual group or company. Thank you very much. I want to focus on Josh for a second because Josh and Lily were friends and like I said, they would collaborate quite a bit. But this whole friendship came to an end when he posted about cutting somebody out of his life. And in what is one of the few moments of Lily ever taking accountability for her own actions that you are going to see, Lily commented that this was her. I've been increasingly passive aggressive towards Josh, dismissing his opinions and being increasingly short tempered with him as time has gone on, treating discussions with him that have any degree of seriousness with the same disregard and callousness as I would a random YouTube comment. And Josh was far more patient with me than I had ever been with him. I've been a very poor friend to Josh over the last few years and Josh deserved better than this. I am truly sorry. This though would not last for very long because Lily then went to create a campaign against Josh. And apparently this all led to a lot of harassment being thrown his way and even death threats. Because of all of this, he sent her a cease and desist, which Lily then mocked in a video and just completely took the piss out of it and didn't take it seriously whatsoever. One thing I can say about Josh is that his woeful misunderstanding of the legal system is a wealth of comedy potential. So, story time. So clearly she did not cease or desist, which then led Josh to finally open up more about his experiences with Lily. And he created a video where he's talking about their relationship and the ways that he alleges that he really horrifically mistreated him. The thing is though, Josh is not an isolated incident. Like with a lot of the creators that I end up discussing on this channel, Illuminati for one, Lily seems to have a history of just being truly awful to her friends. Another friend who Lily mistreated was somebody called Brittany. This time, Lily cut contact with Brittany. And do you want to know why? Do you, do you want to know why? Because you were never going to guess. In fact, actually, right now, this is also me slightly engagement farming, but also I'm interested in your answer, what you possibly think this could be. But right now, before I tell you, leave a comment and just guess why Lily cut off her friend Brittany, just based on what you know about Lily so far. Did, did you do it? Right. I'm going to tell you. Lily cut off her friend Brittany because Brittany was not playing World of Warcraft fast enough. 
I'm, I'm. Why? I know some people take World of Warcraft really seriously, but at the end of the day, is it that deep? To be honest, I personally doubt that this was the actual reason. I'd say that this was more of an excuse based off of what we know that Lily did to Brittany. Lily had a fake account, allegedly, under the name of Tara. Now, if you ask Lily, Lily will say that Tara was a real person, but all evidence begs to the contrary. The issue is that Tara was messaging Brittany and trying to pressure and coerce Brittany into doing adult things with Lily. Just another little thing that points to it not being <laughs> Tara at all. Plus the fact that nobody else in the world seemed to know who Tara was and that the account for Tara used a fake profile picture which was just some random person off of Google. And another person called Blake also had the same experience of being messaged by Tara and pressured to do things with Lily. But her terrible behaviour and treatment of people is not just limited to her friends, she has allegedly also done this to her romantic partners as well. One ex that spoke up about their experience with Lily was Lizzie. She posted her entire testimony to Twitter and I'm just gonna let it speak for itself. Here's some context to start. I'm sure you'll start to see how they connect. First, our relationship was long distance. And like most LDRs, that meant our intimate time was largely digital. Second, as an artist, I like to draw things for her a lot. Usually doodles of her OCs or illustrations of inside jokes and the like. Third, my ex often liked to test the waters when it came to my boundaries. Her exact phrase for this was nudging the walls to see if they were still standing. Revisiting a line I had already drawn was almost expected. And fourth, I was not very good at enforcing my boundaries at the time, so those walls typically crumbled pretty easily, whether I had changed my mind on the matter or not. What all this adds up to is that for a time I was drawing a lot of suggestive artwork for her, usually of the two of us, sometimes just of me digital pictures, hand-drawn tapes, and maybe this wouldn't have been a problem if I hadn't absolutely hated every second of it. And she knew that. Those drawings made me feel so sick and embarrassed. After a session, my hands felt dirty, my drawing tablet tainted. I was cold. I couldn't draw my usual art afterwards without at least a day's break. I finished them as fast as possible, and after I sent it, I'd immediately delete the file from my computer and hope no one would see it on hers. Every time I finished one, I'd hope that would be the last for the night, that she wouldn't think of another hot idea. Oh, I tried to tell her I was uncomfortable, and sometimes she appeared to listen. But that's where the guilt and subtle pressure would come in. She knew the ways to ask me that felt weird to refuse. Because of reasons private to her that I won't discuss here, it also felt beneficial to her mental health to do them. Like I was making her feel happy and attractive in a way her brain normally wouldn't allow. I wouldn't deprive her of that, would I? I was the supportive, accommodating partner. That's what she loved about me, right? So, as many times as I tried to put my foot down, the next time she was having a very bad day and I had no idea how to make it better, a very common occurrence. I'd offer my services again and she would let me without a moment's hesitation. She'd be happy and I'd tell myself that's all I needed to be happy too. I remember one night when this all came to a head. We were having a video call while I drew so I could see her giddy reactions to the finished product, the only part of the procedure I actually enjoyed. This was also around the time that the drawings were getting more and more explicit. See those walls getting nudged farther and farther? Drawing while on camera made it especially hard to hide my discomfort, and that was when I was asked to draw the most explicit one yet. And I… just couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to do it. I tried my best. I didn't want to disappoint her or kill the mood but my hand just refused. And my fake smile finally fell away as I burst into tears. Her reaction to this when I told her what had happened, she was mad at me for, quote, making her feel like an a-hole. It was my fault for not telling her, even though I had. She said we wouldn't do that anymore drawings after that, that was a lie. We did stop them, eventually. With her, it usually took multiple tries of me trying to enforce my boundaries before they were direct enough to get through to her. By which I mean she'd ignore me asking nicely and then get mad when I eventually asked not so nicely but relented. And for a time, I thought I could put this behind us like all the other issues that arose. 
I always knew that behavior was coercive. I was drawing porn, which I definitely didn't want to do out of guilt and pressure, and because I was afraid of her reaction if I refused. However, while we were together, I thought we could put it past us, and after we broke up, I thought I really understood what happened. But just a few weeks ago, I told my friend this story, and she dropped this bombshell on me. This feels like assault. I was not emotionally safe in that situation. My inability to enforce my boundaries was taken advantage of for her gratification. I was being emotionally and solely AB used. And now, my ex essentially has new me, if she still has them, to use as she sees fit. Well, I'd certainly like to know how she can possibly twist the story I'm about to share, especially since even she once called it the worst thing she ever did. In late December 2016, I awoke and checked my Tumblr, which I no longer have thanks to her audience's harassment, and found that my ex had started a game on her blog where followers would tell her what SUL things they would do to her in a consequence-free environment. Needless to say, I was shocked and extremely uncomfortable with my fiancé doing this without asking me about it first. However, in a Discord group call that same morning, everyone including her and a few mutual friends acted as if this was completely normal and fun. A silly game to elicit fun ideas or something. In that classic, I don't want to be a downer mindset, I tried to play along with the crowd, but tried to confide in my ex my discomfort shortly afterwards. Her response was that it was a link and I couldn't get in on why it was fun because I didn't share said link. The real issue was that it was cheating, public cheating. This game continued to resurface on her blog with growing frequency, and my discomfort and anxiety over it remained and increased. I couldn't stop myself from checking her blog whenever it was going on, seeing what SUL content these strangers were soliciting to my partner and, worse, seeing the pleased reactions they'd get out of her. My ex gave further reasons as to why she liked it, which were similar to why she pressured me into drawing the images from my last story. This game made her feel attractive and desirable in ways that her mind didn't typically allow. It made her feel good about herself. While we were together, I was my partner's biggest supporter when it came to that sort of thing. Her mental health became such a priority to me that it became a detriment to mine. So, no matter how much I hated the game and how much she knew I hated it, I let her continue it. She didn't have a lot of support back then. I couldn't take away something that helped her, right? But when it comes to saying nothing when asked what's wrong, I'm guilty as charged. And I was so put off and upset by this that it was impossible to keep it hidden. After weeks of this cycling between my trying to tell her how I felt versus pretending to be okay with it, she finally promised to stop one night. I remember going to bed thinking, well, that whole ordeal sucked, but at least it's over now. I woke the next morning to find her doing it again, with a post saying she would not stop doing something she liked just to capitulate to someone else. And that's when it hit me that this person did not actually care about my feelings and boundaries, or rather, never to the extent that they surpassed her own needs, something I did constantly and would never see reciprocated. She knew exactly how I felt and deliberately went against it without even saying it to my face. So I gave up. I still checked her blog when it happened, but I stopped fighting her about it. She would never listen, and she wouldn't stop. The only resistance I put up was to continue the drawings and do certain other… things for her that I didn't really feel like doing because otherwise she would get what she needed from the game. It really felt like putting out to keep my partner out of someone else's bed. This went on for two months, from New Year's Eve to my birthday. On my 20th birthday, in the middle of calling my parents, I checked Tumblr and found that the facade of the game had turned into my ex full-blown S texting with people. Roleplay us texting. After I ended the call, I called her. Q50's wife turning on a lamp in a dark living room after her husband comes home late. I told her I would leave her if she ever did something like this again. And suddenly, that was when it finally got through to her what she had done. That was when the remorse and apologies came flooding in. The side blog used for the game was deleted. She even tried sending me a link to a damn bracelet she thought I might like. I had to coolly tell her that buying me things wouldn't fix Jack Hit. In retrospect, I should have ended it there. That should have been the last straw. But of course I made excuses for her. Believe me, I lost a lot of self-respect from all that. I always considered cheating to be a one-hit KO for any relationship, and here I was giving her a second chance. I tried so hard to process all the rage and hurt I was feeling without exploding at her. I knew that she loved me and wanted to fix this. And, of course, she didn't mean to. That's what I told myself was the only reason that made this forgivable. There's more to it than that. 
but for now, I'll just say her attempts at repairing things when I came to visit her the following summer were rocky, to the say the least, and were not even at the part that made me finally decided to end things. But yeah, my ex publicly cheated on me for two months and successfully gaslit me into going along with it, thinking I was being a supportive partner no matter how awful and unvalued it made me feel. Oh, and P.S. She also told me to not talk about why the ass game ended either online or to anyone in her circle, because it could end her YouTube career. So not only did all that happen, but I was given a gag order to protect her reputation from the consequences of her own actions. Almost forgot about that. PPS. Some of the participants in the game were people in her Discord server or other acquaintances. One particularly active participant was even added to the server shortly after the game was ended, which my ex swore was a coincidence. As we're going to continue on from this point, the allegations being made are only going to get more and more sinister. And they go in a very specific direction direction. And this will be more evident what I mean by this with this story to do with Josh Scorcher and the creator I mentioned earlier, Ink Rose. I feel like this is something that has died down a lot in recent years, but a couple of years ago it was really, really common, especially on YouTube and on fandom communities, to ship real people. For example, the whole Septiplier thing, which both Jacksepticeye and Markiplier have openly stated that they were very uncomfortable with and didn't want people doing. And Lily Orchard also participated in this shipping of real people, although not Septiplier. Well, actually, maybe she shipped Septiplier, but I have no idea and it's not relevant for this video. What is relevant is the fact that she shipped something called Fire Rose. Now, Fire Rose was a combination of Ink Rose and Josh Scorcher because he went online as Commander Fire Blaster. Fire? Come on. No, that's not right. Come on. Give me a second. <laughs> Commander Firebrand. I don't know why I came up with Fire Blaster all of a sudden. It's literally written right in front of me that it's Firebrand. Not only were these real people and people that Lily had collaborated with, around the time that this was going on, Lily and Josh were, as far as I'm aware, both about 23, 24, and Ink Rose was underage. In a Tumblr post, Lily was asked, why do you ship Fire Rose anyway? And she responded with this, you want the real reason or the funny reason? Screw it, I'll give you both. Funny reason, young Republicans who embody the kind-hearted nature that genuine family values are supposed to embody and are the spitting image of that homey American family with very few of the modern drawbacks, they're likely the very last of their kind. I'm pretty sure there are zoologists out there who are legally obligated to try and get them to breed. Real reason? The two of them have the exact same values, the exact same traditions and the exact same virtues and vices. That's not just a silly ship. I actually said to Josh that I think he and Ink Rose were practically made for each other. And if this ship becomes canon, I will have the most smug I told you so face in the history of smug I told you so faces. Keep this part in mind because it's said by some people that she's not actually shipping the real people of Josh and Ink Rose. She's just shipping their characters, their OCs. But she clearly is stating here, I said to Josh that I think he and her are made for each other and that it's not just a silly ship. She actually wants it to happen. But it gets worse. Don't worry. But she's underage. She won't be for very long. Are you... Are you kidding me? What in the grooming? Also, I wrote a book where a 15-year-old ran off with a 38-year-old and you all thought it was lovely, so let he who is without sin cast the first stone. You are not Jesus. Let's get that out of the way, first of all. And secondly, the fact that you wrote a story where a 15-year-old runs off with a 38-year-old does not make that okay. In fact, that's really wrong, actually. It's not even slightly okay. There is actually a book I read as a kid with a similar storyline and it was a very big popular book. And I was actually thinking about reviewing this 
on my channel, please let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do that. It's a, it's a Jacqueline Wilson book. I love Jacqueline Wilson as a kid. When I read this though, it reminded me of that for some reason, but I feel like probably what every Lily has written is so much worse. But removing my tangent from that, can we just take a moment here to acknowledge what's happening? An adult Lily Orchard is shipping an adult Josh with an underage Ink Rose, real people, and privately saying to Josh, you two should, you sh should go out. And it's okay that she's underage because she won't be for long. That, hmm. If you think that's okay, go to therapy. I'm not going to argue with people in the comments about this. If you think that's okay, go to therapy. Just do that. And for the good of yourself and for everybody else around you. And if you think a 15 year old running off with a 38 year old is okay, just go and hand yourself in to the police. Just immediately, please. But as well as being inappropriate with other YouTubers, Lily has also been accused of being inappropriate with her own audience. She has posted a lot of NSFW stuff onto her Tumblr. Very explicit stuff, images, answering questions from people on Tumblr that are all very explicit. Despite the fact that her Tumblr is predominantly reviewing children's content. Now, I'm not saying that adults don't watch kids content. Sometimes I watch the Powerpuff Girls. However, if I had a blog talking about the Powerpuff Girls, I don't think it would make any sense to mix that with NSFW stuff because even if there are adults who are enjoying that stuff, there are also children the people who it's being marketed to who enjoy that stuff and might find your content and then find the other content that you're posting. She also said on Tumblr that people can email her undressed photos without any consequence because she'll delete them after. This is clearly, in my own opinion, her trying to say, hey, it's okay if people send me those things. I don't know if you can ask yourself questions on Tumblr. I don't use Tumblr. I only found out yesterday that I, I have a Tumblr account that I made years ago. I have no recollection of making that. Apparently I do. But the first thing that popped into my brain was what if she just asked herself this question so that she could answer it and get people to send her these photos of themselves. And how is she gonna vet that the people who are sending them are adults? How is she gonna vet that? Is she gonna wait to open it until she gets some kind of ID verification? Probably not, I don't know. I'm not saying that her hard drives should be checked because I am not the law. But somebody might say that. She also encouraged a minor to watch her stream to find out what happens in it and in that stream she showed parts of herself that are not suitable for everybody of every age group and for every website if you get what i mean she also apparently did this a lot on youtube live streams and would get away with it by deleting the stream immediately after which is just completely against youtube's terms of service and just weird like, if you want to do that, there's other sites to do that on. Why Why are you doing it on YouTube? What is, what's going on there in your brain? You need to get it together. She did try and defend this, saying that her streams were age restricted. But the fact of the matter is she did, allegedly, I guess, encourage a minor to watch this stream knowing that they were underage. And also, you can just lie about your age on YouTube and get into the stream if you really want to. She also lied and said that YouTube requires somebody to submit their ID in order to watch 18 plus streams, which is not true. Like, that's just not true. And she would also know that that's not true. And anybody who's ever watched any kind of age-restricted content on YouTube would also know that that's not true. So I don't know how you make such a blatant lie and just expect everybody to take that at face value, but this seems to be a thing that controversial creators do. I don't get it. I'm never gonna get it. Doesn't make any sense. And as well as encouraging people under the age of 18 to go and watch her streams where she's allegedly showing parts of herself, people have also dug up her drawings 
that she enjoys in a very adult manner. Again, for the people who have been here for a while, you will remember the Team Pinata drawings. These were drawings of cartoon characters and of OCs who were children in very compromising sorts of positions. Again, I'm pretty sure you understand what I'm saying here. Now, Lily Orchard on some old accounts allegedly had a lot of this kind of stuff saved and I've had to sift through it and I'm really worried now that I'm on some kind of watch list, which was also my concern back in the Team Pinata days, as well as the fact that I just don't want to be looking at it but unfortunately I have to look at some of it to be able to confirm that what people are saying is actually true. These are all drawings and some of them are just, you know, they're, they're normal but still gross. I don't like them. But they're not obviously problematic. Some of them, however, are because they will include things with animals. They will include things with children, allegedly. And drawings are not that is really really messed up and completely and entirely and utterly not okay but lily seems to not care about this at all in fact lily has also written her own fan fiction based on my little pony which delves into all of these same topics this fan fiction was called stockholm and it is it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot it includes scenes with children, scenes, if you get what I mean, I think you do, descriptions of them, scenes between two 14 year old characters, a description of a character who's saying how much they enjoy their sister. You're gonna just have to understand the context here because I can't say all the things that I need to say. And one character in this, essays, a minor. One of the friends in the story reports the person who does that and for some reason the whole lesson of the story is that this makes the person who did the reporting a bad friend. What in the name of God? Why would you write that? Why would you write that? And I just, for my own sanity, I have to actually remove the morality of this just for a second in my own head so I don't absolutely lose it. But I want to say ironically, considering how Lily is also known for her writing tips, it's really badly written as well, just to add insult to injury. But the, that's not the point. The point is not the actual quality of the writing. The point is that it's immoral and it's gross and it's creepy and it's wrong. Obviously, I can't go into detail of everything because that would also be gross. And again, I really don't want to be on a list. Like, I, I, I'm not a bad person, I swear. At the moment, Lily denies writing this and has changed her story multiple times saying that she didn't write it or she did write it, but then people added the bad bits and all of this. But there are clips of her admitting to writing this. Time for really dub fan fiction. Halloween brings out the scary in all of us and it seems that the fandom has no trouble channeling the spirit of the terrifying 365 days a year. When I started this series I had every intention on doing something special for Halloween and nothing could be better than taking a truly bizarre and messed up fanfic and picking through it like an amphetamine fueled chimp. But which one? There's so many. Fallout Equestria? That's too long. Fall of Equestria? No. Equestrian pony meat business? I think I'll break my rating limits. Can't do Stockholm, I wrote that one. And again, referencing that she wrote this. She even admits to having written it on Tumblr. So she wrote it. She did write it. I don't know why this is being lied about. Again, everything I'm saying is alleged, opinion-based, but allegedly, and in my opinion, she definitely bloody wrote it. She said it herself. Now, this is when I get to the absolute worst allegation. I won't go too deeply into this because at a certain point of talking about it, it's just, it's too much. But if you want to skip this section of this video, skip to this time here, and I will be done talking about it if you feel like you do not want to hear this part. This will include mentions of essay among other things. So again, skip to that time if you don't want to hear it. And at that point I will be done and I'm not going to directly reference it again. Like I said, I'm not going to go into great details because it's very explicit and very graphic. I will, however, link the full post 
in the description if you want to read the full thing. But essentially, Lily's sister Courtney has made accusations against her from when they were children. This included Lily making very gross comments, talking about the relationship between siblings, again, if you get what I mean, and allegedly doing things while Courtney was asleep. These are very, very serious accusations. Obviously, it's very, very important to listen to the people who say these things have happened to them, but I do also have to point out that I have no proof for this actually occurring. Like everything in this video, this is an allegation, but it's important to include because if it is true, it's absolutely awful. Again, if you feel like you can handle it, then you can read the full thing. It's in my description. These aren't even all of the things that Lily Orchard is being accused of. These are just some of the main stories, but I think still they paint a picture of just how awful this creator may be. If everything being said about Lily is true, if all the receipts and the evidence are true, then Lily is one of the biggest creeps on YouTube. That's all for today's video, so thank you so much for watching. Please do leave me a comment and let me know everything you thought about what we discussed today, and if you don't want to comment about that, which is understandable given the subject matter, then leave me a comment and let me know if I should bring back the red lipstick. I've, I'm talking about the OG days today, uh, obviously, again, given the subject matter, but I used to always wear red lipstick like in almost every single video, and then one day I just stopped. I don't know why, I just, I don't know, I guess I got bored but are we liking it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's the right shade of red either. I know that's a stupid thing to comment, but you know, it, it's important to have something normal to discuss. You can also let me know how your day is going. As well as that, if you guys want me to go into the rest of the things that I didn't discuss in this video, let me know. I didn't want this video to be two hours long. I wanted it to be kind of more digestible, but if you want me to go into everything else, I absolutely will. Anyway, like, comment, share, follow me on social media. I'm Vangelina Scott everywhere. Please, most importantly, do subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'm almost done, I swear. I, I just have a couple of things to say. And if you would like to support me and the channel, then you can check out the Patreon. There are a lot of different benefits there, including exclusive merch that is only available on Patreon. So do check that out. Thank you very much. Again, already said it, but thank you so much for watching today's video. Please do not forget to check out HelloFresh using my link. That link is in the description for you as well. And you can use the code SCOVFREE when signing up and you will get a free breakfast item in every box while your subscription is active. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and thank you for watching today's video. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.